Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another recreational pogroming session with Amista Azuzin. So let's make a little bit of an announcement. Uh, Red Circle, please, uh, live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch at dot at television website? Today we are uh, hacking Lua. That's right. So I'm going to give the link to where we're doing all of that, uh, twitch.tv slash sodding, and I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. And there we go. The stream has officially started. The stream has officially started. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So Lua is a quite famous scripting language. Um, and uh, what's interesting about this language is that it's actually very simple, right? So the kind of the simplicity of this language is sort of like a selling point and everything. And today, uh, I would like to actually put that to test, uh, if you know what I mean. Right, so I'm going to download the source code of Lua. Uh, not like this, actually, just a second. Uh, I'm going to download the source code of Lua. And we're going to try to explore the internals of Lua. Right, we're going to try to explore the internals of Lua and see how simple it is, how explorable it is, and maybe how extendable it is. One of the things I want you to do with Lua specifically is to maybe just uh, hack into its parser, right, and in interpreter, and maybe add a, a, like a new construction that doesn't exist in the language. Right, so this is something that I want you to do. It's kind of like uh, one of these sort of like a tests uh, to, to how simple the language is. Uh, right, and I want to just try to do that. So I personally don't really program in, in Lua that much. Uh, right, because for me, it's just like a toy scripting language. But I mean, for any toy scripting language, there's always a use case. And it's pretty popular language for, you know, for making extensions, right? So people quite often embed uh, that language to uh, different applications to make them extendable, to make them scriptable. And it's a pretty good use case. It is a pretty good use case. So um, I would even say if we are just like comparing only scripting languages, I think Lua as a scripting dynamic language is probably one of the best uh, out of them, right? Especially because it's strongly typed, if I'm not mistaken, right? It is a strongly typed. So one of the problems people have, like, <laughs> that's actually very interesting. So it's already several people who said that. So one of the things we will definitely need to do, we need to make their, array, their arrays start with zero. <laughs> We're going to try to do that, sure. <laughs> Holy fuck, this is such a cool idea. Why didn't I think about that? Right. Fixing Lua. Fixing Lua. Making array start from zero. Holy shit. Okay, so maybe we're going to try to do that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so we already downloaded this. So this is going to be the topic for today's stream, everyone. This is basically the topic for today's stream. I want to explore Lua. I want to see how difficult it is to read its source code. Uh, right, so let's go. So we already, yeah, so it downloaded very quickly. It unpacked very quickly. So how many even, uh, yeah, it's actually less than 100 of files. Right, I think um, I already, tr wait. Are you fucking, t is, is this the entirety of this? Wait. Um, uh, but where is the configure script? <laughs> Where the fuck is configure screen? <laughs> is that it? Is that simple? Um, appar apparently it is. App apparently it is that simple. Wait a fucking second. So, uh, where is the executable though? So let's actually do find type file, uh, file, uh, and do the name. Actually, let's say we want to find executable, right? So okay, so there's Lua C. What the fuck is Lua C? Uh, like, I know what is Lua, though. All right, and I know what is Lua. It's an interpreter. Okay, so that's cool. So let's actually go into into the source code, right? So let's actually go into the source code and, um, right, try to see what the fuck is a Lua. All right, so this is basically Lua, if I'm not mistaken. So one plus one, so two, right? So that seems to be like a reasonable thing. What does Lua see? Uh, so list uh, files, parse only, so it doesn't really tell me what the fuck it is, but it wants to have files, right? Is that like an interpreter specifically for files or something like that? But I mean, it's probably the Lua itself is also accepting files, right? So wait a second, yeah. It, it, it can also accept like script, 
and uh, files and arguments and stuff like that. So Lua C must be some sort of a low compiler. It must be low compiler, that's for sure. So um, maybe we're gonna have uh, like a simple file, simple script that we can experiment with, right? So we should be able to do that. Um, so where can I, where can, I can I write that? Okay, so we're gonna have main Lua. And how do you print to the standard output? Is that just print? Uh, hello world? Can I do shit like that? And why Emacs is shading warnings yet again? <laughs> Som sometimes it likes to do that. Sometimes it likes to do that. Okay, so it, it is working apparently. Right, and if I do SRC Lua, uh, so this is main Lua. Can you see, by the way, what I'm doing? C can you see what I'm doing? Uh, right, so if I do C, can it open? Wait, didn't I say? Okay, so I didn't save this entire thing. Okay, so then that. Okay, so that seems to be working. And C. And what did it do? It created lunacy out. Lunacy. <laughs> lunacy. <laughs> okay, lunacy out. So and uh, what the fuck is lunacy? Is that like a bytecode? It's a it's a lua bytecode. It created a lua by bytecode. Holy shit! So we can even take a look at XXD. Huh. What if we write compiler that compiles C to loop? <laughs> Probably, probably not a good idea, but I mean, uh, yeah, you can actually compile to Lua bytecode and the bytecode seems to be simple, uh, like a BIM file format or something. So maybe we can even extend that bytecode and add a new instruction or something like that. So yeah, that seems to be pretty poggers, I think. That seems to be pretty poggers. Uh, okay, guy. so that's pretty cool. So there is a bytecode, there is just interpretation. I wonder if it, even when it interprets things, it compiles first into the bytecode and then it, uh, you know, uh, sort of interprets the bytecode instead of the AST. Because you can actually make an interpreted languages language in like different ways. Uh, all right, so you can just parse an AST and then you can just traverse an AST. Uh, and, you know, interpret it as you traverse it, or you can first compile the AST into the bytecode and then traverse the bytecode, right? So, um, I don't know, it just depends. Uh, like, I, I suppose Lua might be actually first compiling into their own bytecode and then interpreting that bytecode, right? So, and then th there are things like J Lua JIT, right? Uh, if you never heard of it, like somebody created like a JIT compiler for Lua. So I suppose what it does, it compiles bytecode of Lua to, uh, you know, to, to, to machine code, right? So just in time compiler. Come for page Lua. Uh, Coco Lua extension for true C coroutines. True C coroutines. What the fuck is that? Small extension to get true C what it What the fuck is a true C coroutines? I've never heard about that. Does anybody know? Does anybody know what is a true C coroutines? Um, right, so <laughs> DuckDuckGo doesn't really know why, like, and the true is just like it's part of the brand, so to speak. Uh, real C shit. True C coroutines. <laughs> yeah, only Lua G talks about that. It's like a Lua G thing. So <laughs> they made it up. But they make it sound like it's something, something like outside of Lua or something. It's just like kind of weird. Uh, real C shit. Real C shit. So that's what it is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So uh, where is the executable actually start? So there is a Lua C. Lua C. Uh, standalone interpreter. So if you go into... So this is the P main, main body of the standalone interpreter to be called in protected mode. Reads the options and handles them all. Gotta handle them all. Uh, all right, so this is the P main, but where is the actual main? We don't, I don't really see the actual main. I wonder if I can actually find that. So it's gonna be uh, Lua main, right here it is. Uh, it, it's actually in Lua C, but I couldn't actually find that for some reason. So there's Lua P. Uh, yeah, maybe I need it, but there we go. So here is an actual thing. So we first thing we do, we create a Lua state, right? Its own independent Lua state. That's pretty cool. Uh, so then we stop GC while building the state, right? That's very interesting. So we stop the GC. Uh, P main. Oh, we actually call that P main thingy 
Right, so it's actually called From Within, uh, From Within Lua. Right, that is very interesting. So we push C function. So I suppose it's sort of like a stack based machine or something. Then we push the first argument. Uh, then we push the second argument. And then we call. Right, so this is how you call functions within the Lua virtual machine or something. Uh, then you get a Boolean, right? So Lua to Boolean and you report the status and there you go. So this is so funny. So the main function of Lua interpreter calls another function as the entry point, but it calls it from the Lua context. From the Lua context specifically. And I suppose the, yeah, so then you can have a Lua state in here. So then you can have a Lua state. That is freaking funny, actually. <laughs> that is freaking funny. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Uh, so, and in here, we're just doing different things. And I wonder where we uh, sort of like, uh, you, you have a handle script, right? So we have a script and what the fuck is script? Uh, so collect arguments, script, argv. So set fields. I want to find a place where we load the contents of the file, the contents of the script. Uh, sm small pp machine. <laughs> yeah, so this is small. Well, it's so small, it's just single p. It is just single p. So that is pretty apogers. That is a pretty apogers. Uh, so handle lua so there is a function called run args, run args. Uh, it goes through arguments. Okay, so, and you have different options. So uh, if the argument starts with that, so that is understandable. Uh, do string, do string. You know what? You know what? Can we simply uh go through all of that scheisse in the debugger is that something we can do because i think it's going to be fun actually uh let me find the the file and see file uh lua right so where's the file lua does it have uh debug information it doesn't even have debug information right so i don't really see any debug information so it's not really built with debug information but i think we can actually do that so do we have debug uh, no. Do we have C flags? No. That is bizarre, my friend. So if I try to do something like minus B, are they built with debug information? I don't see them being built with debug information whatsoever. So we can't even debug this shice. We can't even debug this shice. Disgusting. Disc. <clears throat> okay. So how do we do that? Is there something like CC or GCC? So where is GCC? Um... So, does it include any other files? I don't see it including... Okay, so here is another make... Okay, so here it is. So, there is something with the debug. They don't mention anything with the debug, but they do have C flags. Right, they do have C flags. And I suppose one of the things we can do, we can actually modify this entire thing and just do ggdb, right? So let's actually add debug information right there and let's rebuild the entire interpreter with the debug information. There you go. So you can modify make files directly to make them do what you need to do. That's the power of simplicity. That's the power of simplicity. You don't have to rely on the developers of the language to provide you an option for that. You can just hack the source code if it is simple enough. That's the power of simplicity that people do not appreciate. Mm -mm. There was my C flags. I mean, who cares about my C flags? I hack into the system. I don't need some options provided by the developers. <laughs> mm, okay. So what do we have in here? So we got this choice and uh, let's do uh, GF2, SRC, so Lua. Uh, right, so let's actually start this entire thing, and I suppose we can break on, uh, literally on main. Let's actually break on main, and we're gonna run the hello, or what, is, what, what was that, uh, Lua main. Okay, there we go. So we actually uh, broke into the system. Right, so let's actually go to the next thing. 
Uh, so, you know, I think I'm going to actually break at P main, right? So I'm going to break at P main and I'm going to just continue the ex execution until it breaks in the P main because now I want to see the call stack, right? So this is basically the entire sort of journey the call stack has to travel to actually reach P main. So that's how deep it is, uh, which is rather interesting, I think, right? So we went here, we did the P call. Um, so what we did, uh, what we had to do here. So we save in the stack. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here. Low p call k, uh, right? So then we do p call row run protected, uh, and then we finally arrived in here. Okay, so that is very cool. Uh, so we do Lua to user data, uh, collect args. Uh, and uh, then, so it, it has a little bit of optimization, so it's kind of difficult to actually see. So script is optimized out. Script is optimized out. What the fuck? I suppose this is because, uh, right, so when we compile this entire thing, if we take a look at this stuff, uh, it actually enabled quite a few optimizations, honestly, right? So it enabled quite a few optimizations, so it's kind of difficult to... Uh, you know, to work with all of that. So let's actually remove O2 and recompile it without any optimizations, right? So again, the language is so simple, I can just do that. I think it's pretty cool. So I'm going to actually compile with five threads. I hope it's not going to kill the stream completely. <laughs> all right, so that was fast. So look at that. With five threads while also streaming, this is how much time it takes to recompile the entirety of Lua. So yeah, for... Four seconds or eight seconds? I, I think, yeah, I think just four seconds. And this is on a 10 years old laptop, by the way. This is on a 10 years old laptop. So, and yeah, apparently the, the rumors about this language are true. The rumors about this language are true. Even such a person who's absolutely fucking allergic to bloat. I'm absolutely fucking allergic and you guys know that. I approve of this shit? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I approve of this shit, I suppose. Yeah, so that's that's amazing. And it's it's really amazing that they managed to actually make this language so fucking popular, right? Because it is extremely popular. It's one of the most popular scripting languages. Yet it didn't become absolute fucking bloat. I, I do respect that. I actually and ironically do fucking respect that. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> This is so cool. All right. So even though like it's slow, probably right by itself, it doesn't have any JIT and stuff like that. But the fact that it's so simple, it managed to be preserved so simple yet. It's sort of like a legit tool that people actually use every day. So it's embedded in a shit ton of software, in a shit ton of different games like text editors, uh, games like text editors, games, uh, comma, text editors. Uh, that's what I mean. So that's that's super cool. I'm actually impressed. I'm actually impressed. So anyways, uh, anyways, so uh, let's uh, go. Let's do that one more time. We're going to break at P main, uh, right? So I'm going to just run this thing and see what is going on. So we don't really have any optimization anymore, right? So, uh, yep. So is the script, uh, right? Script is not optimized out, right? So as you can see, we can actually see this thing, which is good. Uh, right, so Lua check version. Uh, so the arguments has no problem. Uh, right, so Lua open libs, open standard libs. Okay, create arguments table, sure. Start the GC. Uh, okay, generation mode, some, some sort of a generation mode. Okay, uh, execute exec arguments dash E dash L. Right, so that's the arguments we executed. I suppose they are not really that important for us. Execute main script if there is one. Uh, Apparently, as you can see, it says that there is no script, but maybe I just forgot. I forgot to actually run it with the script, so it's not going to execute anything. It's literally, yeah, I think it's not going to work. I should have actually done something like this. There we go. So that's what I should have done. And uh, after that, I suppose, as you can see, we have script one, right? So the reason why we had script zero is because I didn't really provide any script because I fucking forgot. Right. So, uh, yeah, let's continue. And... Did it actually stop? Excuse me, I, I don't get it. What the fuck is going on? Uh, right, so we're collecting arguments and I suppose... Okay, so... Yeah, it, I don't know what happened, but it took some time to actually do things. Uh, Alright, so we're executing that, we're initializing Lua. Uh, running arguments, okay. 
So, okay, this one is interesting. So handle script, handle script. Let's actually step into that function. Uh, we're handling the script. Uh, so we have f name, I suppose. So an f name is in fact uh, main.lua. Okay, so I'm really happy with that. So um, something, something happened. What did just happen? Um, no such file or directory. It tried to, it went into comparing scripts and stuff like that. strcmp SSE, but why did it go there? <laughs> oh, because it was S. Okay, how can I step out? Uh, all right, so I stepped out of this, well, uh, anyway, so I, I had a previous command to step in, saved in. So you know how in GDB you press one command and then you can just keep pressing enter and it repeats the previous command. So I actually had the previous command as a step in. So it stepped into strcmp and strcmp is implemented in assembly and it didn't have any debug information symbols and I just lost the entire context. Like this is basically what fucking happened. <laughs> Debugging is hard, everyone. Debugging is hard, okay? So, give you know, cut me some slack. Uh, so, at least we know where exactly we have to go, right? So, we can actually break at handle script. This time I can kill the entire thing and I can run this thing one more time. Right, there we go. So, now we are in pmain. I can continue. And now I'm in handle script. Uh, right, so I can step. I can step even further. There we go. We're loading the file. We're loading the file. And this is the really interesting function. Uh, so, and I suppose it just does the execution, right? So it just does the execution, but does it really print anything? Uh, maybe it does not. So uh, let's actually take a look at this specific function. So I'm going to do grep or n lua l uh, load file. Uh, there we go. So how is it implemented? So it is, in fact, a macro, right? It is, in fact, a macro. So the, the real function is actually file xc, uh, file x, right? Here it is. So that's the function we have, um, right? And that's the pointer to the function of some sort. Okay, here it is. So you provide the file, and what does it do? So it get opt, so file name could be null, and that means it's going to do that from the standard uh, thing. Otherwise, it's going to push f string. Okay, the function of loading the file is part of the execution context. That is so interesting. So you push f string, you push the file name as a string into the virtual machine of Lua. I suppose all of these functions like Lua uh, and then some operation just modify the state of the virtual machine of Lua. Right, so they're loading a file through the Lua itself. So it feels like a little bit of a le like lisp. That is very interesting, okay. So uh, skip comment and stuff like that. Uh, right, so what, they, what else do they do in here? Uh, Lua load. So that's probably what's going on in here. Lua load. Um, yeah. So it probably takes the file name from the stack. Uh, but also there's also this thing, which is kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. You could have actually implemented these things like this. But you then in line, so you kind of want to... Yeah, they take the result of this operation and then they pass it to the next thing. And it feels like actually like, like, like WebAssembly. Holy shit. I, I feel, it feels like I'm reading WebAssembly, if you know what I'm talking about. The textual representation of WebAssembly. Right, in the textual representation of WebAssembly. Uh, so WebAssembly text. I wonder if we can find something interesting in it. Uh, right, so WebAssembly text, WebAssembly text, uh, so it uses S expressions, right. So first of all, it is a stack machine, right. It is in fact a stack machine. Uh, and essentially, when you do operations like get zero, get one, get two, it just like pushes some values on a, on a stack of the stack machine, right. So here, when you do get, you get the parameter and you push it on the stack of the arguments and stuff like that. Uh, but at the same time, you can actually combine them together. You can actually combine them together. Okay, so this is a very good example here. So let's actually copy paste it like that. 
so let's actually copy paste it like that. So this is a very good example. Um, so you take left hand side argument, right? So this is the function and it has uh, uh, two parameters, left hand side and right hand side. So what we do, we get left hand side and we push it on the, uh, you know, on a stack. Then we get a uh, right hand side, we push it on the stack and then we do add, we add them together. The result is also pushed on the stack. But syntactically in uh, web, like WebAssembly text, you can actually write this entire thing like this, right? Syntactically syntactically you can actually write it like this and then when uh the interpreter actually parses that and st you know starts preparing and everything it will desugar it will desugar this entire thing back into this sort of like an imperative form right but you can write it in sort of like this declarative like lispish form right and it does that by simply traversing like dfsing the ast and sort of like un unraveling it and turn it into that right so this kind of shit with lua when uh you basically have an operation that converts something to string and then you do load feels like that because you could have actually separated these two operations right and you could have taken the result of this thing uh, and put it into a separate variable. So that way it is more like imperative. But because you're doing that in C, you can actually kind of do it like this, which kind of makes it really interesting because like you know that this thing is going to be executed before then the body of the Lua load. Right. At least this is how I understand it right now. I might be wrong, by the way. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just speculating. So this is like a hypothesis about like how all of that works and stuff like that. Uh, but I suppose the main interesting function that we have in here is Lua load. We need to look into the Lua load. And this is probably where we're going to be doing like the parsing and stuff like that, because I want to find the Lexa, the parser and all stuff like that. So and this is where we can try to uh, actually modify things, right? So and see how we can... We can do all of that. Any long language you can't code in, Tsodian? Uh, depends on the definition, can code. What, what do you mean? Like, can I code in Ruby right now? Probably not. Uh, I would ask like for half of an hour to just like learn the syntax a little bit and play with this language and then I can write something simple. And if you want me to work on a commercial project, I would ask to give me a couple of days to learn it a little bit more properly. Uh, so like, what does it mean to can code? Like, uh, like how do you even define it? So I don't know, it's just like, maybe. <laughs> Um, so the, the thing is that um, I tried a lot of different languages, uh, like a lot of them, and I can tell you that there's not that much difference between them, right? So, and uh, what's important is actually knowing uh, how to develop software, how to solve problems, how to look for information. That's what's important, right? And if you know how to do that, the language just doesn't matter anymore. It's just like it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, people put too much weight to languages and to the extent frameworks and technologies and stuff like that. So, yeah, so I don't know, like, the only thing I can suggest you that don't obsess over the languages that much. They're not that important. They're not that important because the your computer doesn't understand any of these goddamn languages, which may sound paradoxical for some people because that's the computer language, isn't it? Like we use these languages to talk with the computer. No, 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 no. These are human languages. Programming languages are human languages. They're created for humans. They're not created for computers. Computers don't understand them. Computers understand sequence of machines instructions. Uh, so at the end of the day, computer executes the sequence of machine abstraction instructions, regardless of your language. It doesn't fucking matter. So it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter. Computer, your computer doesn't give a shit. It executes the sequence of abstractions, right? So how did you produce this sequence of abstractions? It doesn't fucking matter. So that's not important. Um, so anyways, um, so and the, and the question is like, how many languages you can, like, is there any language I can cannot code in? It's a relevant question, actually. It's not like I cannot answer the question or I can't answer the question. It's a wrong question to ask, right? It's a wrong perception on software development. It's just like, uh, it's a bad question in general. It's not about that. Mm -mm. 
Mm. So, um, we need to take a look at the function Lua load. Uh, that's the most interesting function in here, right? So, Lua load. So, we, oh, shit. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, but the, but the majority of the stuff is happening in the, uh, in the SRC, right? So, that's that's what's important. Like, I really like how simple everything is, right? So, it's, it's so cool. Um, so, we have that. This is the pointer. So, there's some pointer in here. Uh, but at the same time, it also feels like a little bit of a definition. Isn't that the same as the forward declaration? Isn't it? I think it is. It's, it's not really that different if you just remove the parentheses in here. Right. So, oh, you're defining it as a variable, but since it's not even a pointer, you can't even reassign this variable. Yeah, it's, it's kind of bizarre, but I mean, it is what it is. Um, all right. So, you provide Lua reader. You provide the Lua reader. And what do we do in here? We do Lua lock. Lua's init. Right, so we do the reader. Protected parser. Okay. Protected parser. Um, so we do a little bit of the parsing. Right, we do a little bit of the parsing. And uh, then we get the G table, global table from the registry and stuff like that. It, it's kind of cool how all of that is actually interleaved with the Lua context, right? Almost everything is done through the Lua context. That is actually kind of cool. Um, that is super cool, actually. <laughs> uh, so you do the reader and stuff like that. So protected parser, uh, right? So and then uh, we can do grab or n, uh, and let me let me see. So this is just that. But what's the implementation? I wonder, by the way. If I can just take all of the files, so we have SRC, right? So it probably makes sense to actually keep all of that in the SRC. Uh, maybe even LS, uh, H, or C, right? So here are all of the files. I'm gonna feed all of these mother flippers into E tags, uh, into E tags. There we go. So we have a huge uh, tags in here, right? So this is all of the huge tags in here. And then, um, right, so if I wanna, jump somewhere like for example here i can just use the tags and i can jump there right which is which was not really that useful but i mean it's it's useful to do these kind of things okay i can now jump around isn't that a pogers isn't that a wogers can your lsp do that can you just jump around in lsp so freaking easily i don't fucking think so we had this technology since 80s mother flipper since 80s uh all right anyway <laughs> So uh, let me let me see. So this is the protected parser in why cannot yield during parsing. Okay, so that's really interesting. Uh, init buffer lua p call f parser. So here is the function uh, that is responsible for the parser. So we take UD, which is probably the state of the parser. So this is a uh, parser state, um, right? And then Lua signature, something binary. Oh, so it depends. So there's different modes of parsing, maybe parsing bytecode or text. And then we have Lua Y parser, right? Lexa, we found a mother flipping Lexa, mother flippers. Holy shice, we found the Lexa. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so anchor it, so Lex state, func state, uh, L closure, create main closure and stuff like that. So there is Lex state dot H, uh, create table for scanner. And uh, right, so here we do a bunch of stuff. It's not even actually, uh, create an anchor. I wonder. I wonder if there is a. Okay, so there is L Lex in here, uh, right? And there is like different things. And here is the Lex state and stuff like that. Here is the Lex state. Uh, right, 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 right. Mm -mm. So create the main closure. Anchor it. Uh, function new prototype. Lex state buffer set input main func. What is the main func? 
we pass lex state and func state into the main func compiles the main function which is the regular var arc function with an uh, app value and stuff like that so compiles the main function right so that's kind of it's kind of funny uh-huh open function set argument alloc object barrier check close function uh-huh that's pretty interesting mm -hmm. all right so what i'm looking for in fact is that where are we pulling the um you know the lexems right so where are we pulling the lexems so this is the lex state uh so we're providing this thing so maybe set input is the thing so then we resize it maybe not uh so lex state uh main function so uh lex state is ls and then we do open function so i'm just looking where is the main job actually happening <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell where is the main job actually happening uh so doesn't make any sense to me and why is that the main function roof scanner table all right so the construction for parsing this thing is not particularly obvious at least to me uh so yeah so this is the protected parser uh, and I suppose I want to go back to uh, Lua L open. I think it was like a Lua O. Uh, uh, I actually lost this thing. Um, okay. Mm -mm -mm. Lua parser. Let me see where that thing was used actually. Where that thing was used. It was used in uh, F parser, right? So I do remember that. I do remember that it was then called in protected parser, okay? And then where that thing was called, uh, this thing was called in Lua load. Yeah, so I was trying to actually go here. Uh, I was actually trying to go here. Mm, yeah, that is very interesting. So I suppose the, the time has come to go into the debugger awaga, a debugger waga. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to kill this entire thing and I'm going to break in Lua load and I'm going to run the main uh, Lua and we are in P main. I'm going to continue. We are in a handle script and we are in a Lua load, right? So let, let us see what the hell is going on. Uh, so I can actually maybe step through some of these things. So we're initializing the reader. Uh, okay, that's cool. So then do protecting parser. And so I suppose it parsed the thing. So we can take a look at the status, right? So we can take a look at the status. So I suppose it is okay, right? So it is okay. Okay, that's cool. So then we get a new function that we just compiled, I suppose, that we just parsed. Uh, all right, so does it have app value? Uh, I don't know what that means. Get G table, set object, uh, right, so then barrier. And did it do anything useful? And just return the status, okay. So, okay, we load it, but how do we actually now run it? Because if, I, if we load it, I would expect this entire thing to actually print hello world, but I didn't see hello world anywhere. So that's the thing. I didn't see hello world anywhere. Maybe I actually missed it. So read status, Lua remove, re, uh, okay, return status. Um, okay, so, so push argument to the script. So this is where we do the call. Okay, so the actual, okay, the actual call to the function was happening in here after we sort of parsed everything and, and stuff like that. So we loaded the file, right? We loaded the file. So we pushed some arguments to the list. We, I don't, I'm not sure what kind of arguments we pushed into the list. And then we did the call and it performed the, the hello world thingy. Um, right. So that's kind of interesting. And that's kind of interesting. So, but that doesn't tell us where exactly we can modify the syntax, for instance, right? That doesn't tell us where exactly we can modify. So I suppose it's somewhere in the, uh, in the loading and whatnot. 
so so we have some compression artifacts it's probably because of the a lot of elements on the screen i really apologize for that i really apologize for that okay so at least i understand the mechanics of this entire process right so we do low l load file we're loading the file so that probably pushes some sort of a function right so then we push the arguments and we do the call uh of the function right so and that performs the thing so loading the file basically constructs a new function mm, can the loading be misused wrong length or something i don't understand the question wrong length of what wrong length where is the length i don't understand so you mean incorrect script well you get a syntax error i suppose um mm -mm. so in the main func there was a call to function something like next token uh maybe that's what you're looking for maybe right so let's actually see uh right so i'm gonna go to grab uh, main funk right so main funk that's what it was right and we can take a look at what i didn't i missed so there was a oh, oh okay next talking in the comments all right so that's very interesting but why is it just like a single call why is that just a single call because like there is a multiple tokens right so what is that um so is there a look ahead token uh so read next token and here is the lexa right okay so this is straight up lexa okay so that makes sense Th this is even familiar because i wrote code like that okay so for a simple interpreter the the entire thing is a little bit convoluted it is a little bit convoluted but not that much but uh, this is familiar okay so i can work with that i can i can understand that i can work with that and it's actually a very simple lexa to be fair for Alexa, it's actually super simple. What's what's the size of this Alexa? Just 118 lines um, and stuff, right? So LS current. Uh, okay, so that's pretty cool. I don't really understand why this is not a loop. You know what I'm talking about? So main func compiles main function. Uh, stat list parse the main body. Uh, yeah, okay so while block follows aha uh -huh. so then we do statement then we parse the statement oh wait a second when we parse in the script when we parse in the script we're just treating it as a main function so we're parsing the content of the file as body of main function so that is actually kind of cool wait is that what it is Right, so compiles the main function, which is a regular varag function with an app value named Lua environment. Right, a main function is just, it's the file. That's the main function, right? Because in Lua, you can just start writing code in the file and just run this thing and it's going to execute it. So it, you can think about it as wrapped into this main function, right, as wrapped into this implicit main function that is parsed and then executed. So that's how it works. Okay, that is actually super cool. That is actually so super cool. So parse the main body, stat list. Okay, I really like that. Parsing main body is a stat list. What the fuck is a stat list? <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's what it is. Right, so void main file. Right, so that's what it is. Uh, so. <laughs> Oh, statement list okay so it's it stands for statement list i see i see so if block follows state okay this is super cool i finally understand what the fuck is going on right so you have a bunch of statements in here right so in a statement right depending on what kind of tokens okay look at that look at that scheiße meine freunde we can inject our own constructions into here so thank you so much for, for who point, for whoever pointed out that main fung. Uh, all right. So and these are tokens, right? So they they are in fact tokens, right? So they are in fact tokens. All right. So you have like a f, like f stat and uh, if stat, for instance, right? And when you are uh, doing this kind of thing, so else if test then block, 
right and in here what do we do uh is that lua next uh lua x next skip if else right so this is the next uh so the, okay so we're okay okay so that that makes a lot of st uh, sense that makes a lot of sense i know how it's it all parsed and all like how all of that is uh, processed and stuff like that so what's interesting is that so skip if or else if read condition okay so here we're parsing expression and we're parsing sub expressions bin ops and stuff okay this is so freaking familiar because i would write this stuff like that i would write something like that so this is kind of stuff that they will write in my languages uh so this is like very dumb very straightforward uh recursive descent right so the thing that john blow constantly talks about right this is a production language used in so many different places doesn't use any like a generator any parser generator or anything like that it's just a dumb recursive descent very dumb recursive descent so because that's what you need recursive descent is all you need recursive descent is all you need recursive, recursive descent into the madness mm -hmm. so i want to see how the byte code is actually generated uh interesting that lua is portuguese for moon right it's like luna right it's, i think it's more of like a derived from latin words from latin language because portuguese is one of the latin languages isn't right so and by the way in russian language we call moon luna as well probably also from latin <clears throat> what's the meaning of all of this uh, lua x and lua y etc i have no idea i see the source code for the first time <laughs> maybe for the second right but i mean it was like long time ago i already forgot everything that happened there mm -mm. Uh, okay so we have uh-huh so first have damn this is also like um where do we do a priority limit where of is binary operator with yeah oh my god this is it's so funny to see the code that i wrote i i didn't write this code i didn't write this code but when i was trying to write my own programming language and i was like trying to reinvent how would you do priorities and stuff like that i came up with a piece of code and then i'm looking at this thing and like i came up pretty much with the same idea it's just it's so bizarre it is so bizarre looking at someone else's code, someone else written, and realizing, oh, we actually came up with the same solution, essentially. Yeah, so that's how we do that. So here we're first processing the left-hand side, and then we have a while loop that keeps collecting the right-hand side until there's certain limit is sort of like met. Yeah, like I personally call this parameter a priority. They call it a limit, which doesn't really matter, which doesn't really change the, uh, you know, the semantics of this parameter uh so that is so fucking cool so that means that means there should be so this is the left hand side uh so lua next skip operator sub expression okay so they're going into the next sub expression and we're sort of like going recursively in here so as soon as the limit reaches certain uh you know place i suppose yeah so maybe they're actually handling that somewhere else maybe they're handling that somewhere else uh so this is a sub expression but we need to find the you know the primary expressions so where are the primaries so this is a u unary priority okay so this is a unary priority and at some point uh, okay so they call it simple express oh okay so the term terminology is slightly different they call it simple expression i usually call it primary expression okay so it doesn't really matter here we have floats integer string nil oh my god look at that look at that beauty primary expressions all right all right all right all right all right okay so 
Okay. So, and we basically encounter, like, this is like, we reach the, like, a bottom of, a, of the abstractions, right? So, where, this is where the actual work is done in the language, right? So, right, so you have Alexa, you look at the current token, the current token is an integer, right? The current token is an integer, so you do something with that. So, we call a function init expression, and uh, so we have an expression description, Right, we have an expression description and expression kind, and we just set all of these things accordingly. Okay, so we initialize that. So, okay, and we just return out of that. So that means uh, this function accepts Lexa as input and express expression description as the output. So that's what it does. It, uh, it basically returns the expression description through that argument, right? And in here, it keeps returning that like that. So the actual value is uh, like being kept returned. So if we go further, so, and of course it is returned from expression here. So then once we parse the condition, so we have um, value description, right? So we have this value description and the question is, what do we do with that? Where else do we pass that? Go if false, right? So that's probably the thing that is very important. So this is expression description. Uh, discharge get vargs. Um, so I'm trying to see whether this entire thing generates any bytecode or does it interpret thing right away? That's the interesting question for me. Uh, PC, so this get, okay, so this is that. Um, const v local index app index i have a feeling that <coughs> i have a feeling that this thing interprets this shit right away that's what it feels like at least it feels like that it interprets it right away if i'm not mistaken so here we read the condition right here we read the condition uh, then that condition as v right as you can see here uh, v uh, where is that? Is passed in here, right? It is passed in here, uh, right? And will jump if condition is true. But that's the very interesting thing. So what is PC? Uh, point account when you jump. Uh, Lua concat. Wait, there is a thing called function state. What is a freaking function state? What is a freaking function state? Ah, I see what is going on. It compiles it into the bytecode, into the bytecode of the function state. So that's what it's doing. It compiled it, a position of the code equivalent to... Okay, 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 okay. So this is sort of like the function into which it compiles all of that. The PC problem counter, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I usually call it IP, instruction pointer, like similar to x86-64, right? But I suppose it's like, yeah, PC. So it also probably indicates how much was already like computed and whatnot, right? So the function state is basically like a closure or something like it's, it's the state of the function. We're compiling that function, uh, right? So that's what it is. That's what it is actually. Okay, so that's cool. That's cool, that's cool. Uh, so previous in close, so they're forming basically like a linked list, right? So there's a lexical state, a chain of current blocks, uh, current position to code equivalent to encode, uh, last target, a number of elements. So is there any like a byte uh, number of active local variables? So this is just uh, different things. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, so what I'm thinking is that like how do we insert new jump into the t list okay uh insert new jump fix jump so they're probably doing some sort of a back patching in here they're sort of doing some sort of back patching aha got you motherfucker got you we found an instruction okay 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 this is so cool so okay funk state uh funk state so there is an f there's a thing called f in there and this is the current function header within this proto within this proto we have the code right so we have the code and it's a sequence of instruction okay found it found it so the way it works is that um 
you have a lexa that gives you the sequence of the lexemes. You have a very simple recursive descent parser, right? It parses this entire thing into this function state, and the function state has this prota where it has the sequence of these instructions. So that's basically what's going on in here. Uh, right, so, and when we do the jump, uh, right, I suppose it will just insert something into there, right, so get, so this is basically backpatching of some sort, right, so this is basically backpatching, uh, but yeah, so the, the code is inserted into, into that thing, right, it's, it's inserted into that thing, that's actually pretty cool, all right, all right, all right. Uh, that is very progress, my friend. Uh, that is very progress, right? So I kind of understand, like, on the, at a high level, how this entire thing operates. Uh, so yeah, maybe we can try to finally hack this thing and do something with this. Uh, for instance, one of the things I wanted to do, I wanted to add like a new construction, new interesting con construction. Uh, we can try to do that. Uh, Zosin, can you check my PR in Mutualizer? I will at some point. So right now I'm actually with Mutualizer, I'm focusing on implementing the rest of the features I want you to do for alpha to release, right? So I want to finish the features. I think I'm pretty much finished the features, uh, right? So the tool tip, there's also a couple of UI fixes that I want, I want you to make, right? I, I'm going to finish that. Then I'm sort of going to do a feature freeze meaning that I'm not working on any more features. And in that feature freeze phase, I'm going to be fixing the bugs that I noticed and then going through the issues people reported and also pull requests and stuff like that. So the reason why it is going so slow is that uh, Mutualizer is kind of like on a back burner for me, <laughs> right? I have a lot of other things to do because it's not like my main thing, but I'll get to that eventually. Don't, don't worry about that. Uh, so feature freeze in the release, yeah, 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 so we're doing real software development in here, guys, just slowly, because we don't have any money, right, so it's just like, we don't have any budget, it's like literally a pet project, so, yeah. So, but uh, we'll get to that eventually, don't, don't worry about that, so don't worry about it. <clears throat> So, yes, yes, yes. I really like what I see, honestly. I really like what I see. So, I'm starting to understand, like, all of that starts to actually make sense. All of that starts to make sense. And I suppose when you call a function, right, so we have a thing like the, the call, uh, what it does, it takes the function state and just execute its code. And maybe the function state is also pushed on top of the argument stack, right? So, because, the, yeah. That's what it does. Like you compile a function, it pushes it on top of the argument stack, and then you say call. It takes it from the top of the argument stack and start executing its code. That is there, right? That is actually super cool. I wonder if there is like a way to uh, maybe see what's on top of the argument stack. Uh, notice how none of these functions that do parsing and stuff like that, they don't get the context of Lua itself. They only get the lex state and everything, right? So. They don't mess with any of that stuff, though the main funk also doesn't do anything. Right, so where do we call main funk? I'm actually want to sort of go back. Uh, right, I'm, I'm actually so, I'm having so much fun, surprisingly. <laughs> right, so this is where it is called. So Lua parser, it's, it's the Lua parser that accepts the Lua state. And then once we prepared a shit ton of different things, I have no idea what kind of stuff we're preparing in here. So we're preparing the closure. Uh, maybe this is where we're going to be putting all that. And then we do main func, right? So we're providing the next state that we prepared in here. So we're preparing, preparing the lexa. We just doing everything to prepare the lexa. Preparing the lexa, by the way, is actually a very complex operation, right? So you have to just create a variable, then you have to create a new something a new scanner new table scanner or something like that then you have to set some values anchor all of that shit then you have to supply the supply the buffer dyd and only then you also have to set the input and only then it is ready for parsing so we also have a function state yeah so we're also preparing the function state we're initializing this entire thing and then we're ready to parse the uh, the sequence of lexems into the function state as soon as we manage to do that, as soon as we got the function state, uh, we are, what do we do with that? So we just do the assertion and that is it. So is that, is that it? But how do we return all of that shit? 
uh, that is bizarre. So this is where it stops. It stops making sense to me. Closure is on the stack. Oh, okay. So CL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So here is the CL. So maybe the function state is associated with the closure on the stack. That's probably what is going on. It's probably associated with the closure on the stack. Uh, so object barrier. So we, we're actually passing stuff from function state in, into different functions. So it's probably registered somehow. Right. So what's important after we're done doing all of that is not really function state, but the closure, that closure on the stack uh, that allows us then to maybe call it. So that is that makes a lot of sense. Mind if we do that makes a lot of sense. All right. So uh, yeah, what I want to do, I want to make a small break. I want to refill my cup of tea. Right. I want to refill the cup of tea. And uh, what I want to do, I want to try to extend the syntax of Lua <laughs> and see if it's going to work or not. <laughs> so I don't know. We can in introduce some sort of a, like a block. Uh, that does something with the code, right? So does something with the code. For instance, like repeats that code twice and see if we can do that. Can, can we extend the syntax of the language and like literally add a new block in there? Uh, so yeah, that would be interesting, right? So I kind of vaguely understand how this entire thing works now. Uh, right, so yeah. Uh, so let's make a small break, and after the break, we're going to try to hack uh, this entire thing, hack the parser, hack the lexa. We probably will need to introduce new new keywords, new lexems, and stuff like that. So yeah, um, all right. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to introduce like some sort of like a simple block that does something like silly and maybe useless, but just to get the idea how you can extend the parser and uh, interpreter, right? So let's introduce the block that, uh, you know, executes its body twice, right? Can we try to do that? I think that would be interesting. And I wonder how exactly we're going to do that. Uh, right. So maybe it's going to be similar to a loop. Maybe there will be a jump there, uh, some sort of a jump, or maybe it's going to copy paste its body twice, though it's going to be kind of difficult to uh, actually do that, I think. And it could be kind of difficult to actually do that. Uh, right, because the, the body could be complex, there could be very complex expressions in there, and that means that we'll have to, yeah, maybe we can just save uh, the, you know, the, the point where we generated the body, and then go back and recopy the entire body, the, the bytecode of the entire body or something like that. Right, we can try to do something like this. We'll see how it goes, actually. Uh, right, but essentially, uh, we can have something like this. Full uh, bar uh, test. Uh, right, so we have this kind of thing. And then we can introduce like a blog that, you know, does the double, right? Double uh, and uh, maybe end or something like that. So, and that's the blog that executes its body twice. Right, it's just a loop, but it always executed twice. Uh, and uh, I wonder how exactly do you do blocks in Lua? Does anybody remember like Lua conditions? Uh, Lua conditions. Let me see. Uh, programming in Lua. Uh, all right. So I see. So essentially you have uh, if, then this thing, then then, and then the body. Okay, so nothing special. I suppose we can just... Yeah, we can just do that. So the only thing we'll have to introduce, we'll have to introduce like a new keyword in here. Uh, right, so we'll see, we'll see. I want to go into the uh, Lua mode that I have in there. And so maybe somewhere here I have, uh, you know, different keywords. There we go. So I can do some... What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Uh, right, but in any case, what I want to do is just like I want to introduce like a double, right? So I wonder if double has any special meaning in here. So I can evolve the buffer, erode the buffer. There we go. That didn't fucking work. Didn't fucking work, mate. I wonder if I can just restart my, uh, you know, my Emacs, and maybe that will work. So let's give it a try. Let's give it a try, mother flippers. Okay, so probe Lua, Lua uh, main. Oh my god. Uh, probe Lua. Go here. Thank you. 
And it didn't work. What the fuck, bruv? What the fuck? Uh, I thought it's going to work. That That's kind of bizarre, in my opinion. Lua mode. Lua mode. Uh, right. So, because we have if. And these are the symbols. So, maybe, maybe it's for the indentation. Okay, I see. Maybe it is for the indentation. So, maybe there is another place where... Okay, so let's actually put that in all of the places, in all of the lists. Oh, so this is the actual place where we do things. Okay. This is the actual place. Okay, okay, okay. So maybe, what if we do like a double? Uh, and then... Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe just double. Can I put Neil in here? Uh, I should. I think I. Yeah. So, uh, for example, here, it seems to be having new in here, so that should be fine. Uh, so maybe, maybe something like that will actually work. All right. We definitely need to extend the extension. Uh, otherwise, uh, no, it doesn't fucking work. It doesn't freaking work. But maybe, uh, since it's const, since it's cost, I probably need to restart the like Emacs one more time. Um, Okay, I'm gonna try. Probe Lua Lua main Lua. What the fuck, dude? Why is it so hard to just add a new fucking keyword? Like, I just want to add a new keyword, bruv. That is so bad. Developers of this extension, that is bad. Like, I want to just add a new keyword and I can't do that easily. That is bad. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, that is bad. All right, so, because for example in here, right, so you have while do, which is like understandable, but I mean, what else do you want? Lua block tokens a list. Um, right, so I don't really know what it wants. I don't really, don't really know what it wants. So with if else, so then it has then, um, so, okay, can I just copy this thing? Like, it's literally the same as the previous one, but with just the double. Uh, all right, and if we take a look at if... By the way... Oh, okay. So, this is indentation modifiers. This is the... Continue... There's so many places where e we have... E this, is, this is insane, honestly. All right. <laughs> I just want to highlight it, bro. I just want to highlighting. Um, so indentation modifiers, the absence of else is deliberate. Uh, continuation uh, high, highlights, breaking line, found token, lure backward, please no error. Um, so where is the, there was like a font locking. I remember the thing called font locking. Uh, font lock keywords font lock keywords you have go to okay so you have four you have function you have local do you have if else or something else in here where are they so yeah so we have four but how do I highlight lower built-in functions and variables yeah So then uh, we have these things. What if I copy paste that shit in here? Why is it so fucking hard to just add highlighting for a new keyword? Like, I, I don't understand. It, it's like it should not be a thing. It literally should not be a thing like that. Um, dude, like I'm... I fucking give up. Like, I, I don't know how to add highlighting for a new thing. Like, and I don't give a fuck. It's so bad. <laughs> So fucking bad, holy shit. How can you overcomplicate a Lua mode to the point that it's not obvious how to add a new keyword? Holy shit, because th that's how highlight simplest highlighting works. You have a list of keywords and you just highlight them differently. It's that fucking simple. It is that fucking simple. Um, it's just like, oh my god. Bruh, that is bad. Like, I don't want to even do anything with that. I don't want to do anything with that, honestly. Fuck that. 
So um, when the language is less complex than LSP, it's not even LSP, it's just like an extension. It's like, it's, it's not supposed to do anything except highlighting and indentation and stuff like that. It's just like, it's bad. Bruv, it's bad. Straight up. Okay, so... Um, okay, local... Yeah, so this is the simples, but yeah, here are the keywords. These are the keywords, right? So, but the, this is not enough. They are not for highlighting. Uh, they are not for highlighting. Or are they? I have no idea. This is so bad. Anyway, so... Um, local... Uh, symbol local... Right, so this is highlighting as well. So did I do double? Yeah, so I kind of did. So l let me restart one more time. Like th I'm going to give it a last chance to actually redeem itself before I abandon this entire idea. Uh, so main.lua. It, it doesn't fucking work, right? So it just doesn't fucking work. Uh, fuck that. And it's just shitting exceptions and stuff. It's, it's bad. Fucking bad. Anyway, uh, so, but maybe I'm just dumb. But again, this is a simple mod. This is a simple mod. It's supposed to just highlight keywords. Like, am I missing something? I'm really that bad. Maybe it's just a skill issue. Who, who fucking knows? But it's just like, uh, so Lua font lock keywords. Yeah, this is usually what uh, you're supposed to do. So let me actually find that. Um, so I would just expect it to have a single list where it keeps all of its keywords because that's what any sane mode does. That's what any sane mode does. Uh, right. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to give it the last chance. Lua, yeah, Lua font log keywords. Th that, okay, I added that. Didn't I? Okay, there you go. So I edited it the same way as I edited four. Uh, maybe I just did something incorrectly. I don't fucking know. D did I forget to save it or like? Um, Lua, Lua. Maybe I didn't change anything. Like I restarted it several times. You guys saw that. Fuck you! Like, what? <laughs> didn't I try that? I already did that and I restarted the Emacs and it didn't fucking work. Now it... What? Hmm... <sighs> <clears throat> Uh, so byte compile, maybe Emacs compiled it when restarting, there was a command to do byte compile. Yeah, yeah, so that's probably what happens. You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> so fucking bad. Again, that's actually besides the point. That's actually besides the point. Why is that not a single centralized place? Like, and you reuse that global list in highlighting in indentation, in any other places, but it's a single list, in a single place. You don't copy paste it like... Ah! This is... come on! And it's not that complicated of an application. Oh, I, I don't fucking know. Just wanted to add a new keyword. Just wanted to add a new keyword. That's how bad software is in 2024. <sighs> Anyways, let's continue. So, um, I wonder how can we add a new token. So, we have things like le token. Um, so, we have TK if, right, don't we? I think I think we have, or maybe something like TK4. Uh, all right. So, let's maybe go into all of these places of... And I wasted so much freaking time on that. It's insane. It's just like... <sighs> The thing that pisses me off is that I have to waste time on that. This is such an unimportant minor thing. But because the file is so structured, like so anally structured, 
I'm forced to waste time on such a stupid thing. It's like, that's what pisses me off, right? It's just like... <sighs> if it was something like serious and something important, I, it would be fine. But it's a thing that has no business taking so much time for me to do. It shouldn't take that much time. It should be one place, add a new keyword, continue working. That's what it should be. The fact that it's just like some weird shit is just like, that's what pisses me off. I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, okay. Um, so I want to find the main funk, right? So that's what I want to find, main funk. Uh, right. And within the main funk, we have uh, some different things. So I want to go like down again into the parsing. Uh, go, down, go down again into the parsing so I can find the like usual tokens and everything so this is the yeah tk if right so where do we have all of these things and in how many places do we do we do we even use that uh right so in how many places do we even use that so there's okay so these are the tags so they're not really that important uh so we check in the match and everything and here is the lex um so funny enough where do we produce the tk though right so where is the association so warning if you change the order of this enumeration grep order reserved that's very interesting actually grep order reserved um all right okay mm -hmm. order reserved ah i see I see. So this is where you have the association and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, so, and it's literally the same, the same order in here as in anywhere else, right? I, I, I even know why. I even know why, because they probably developed that in an old C, where you couldn't do things like uh, TK and, right? So in a in a modern C you can actually do shit like that, and it doesn't really matter in which order you define these things. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so thank you for for the remark though. Thank you for the remark. Uh, that's kind of important. So and let's actually find maybe a while. Let's put some stuff after the while, right? So let's put some stuff after the while. It's gonna be double. Uh, by the way, I never checked that. So is double even already a thing in Lua? Maybe it is not. Maybe it is. I don't know. So double. Um, okay. So so any symbol is a correct symbol in Lua. It just returns nil. Uh, so that's how it, it works. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so after the double, we have uh, TK double. Right. So that's what we have in here. Okay, that's cool. What if I put while in, in, in here? So, yeah, it waits for some shit. Okay, that, that's cool. Uh, all right. So, I saved both of these files, and now I'm going to go try to recompile this entire thing. Uh, right. So, and see what's going to do. What is, it, what is it going to do? Uh, so far, it seems to be compiled. Okay, so, and it failed. And define symbol Lua load. Uh, Lu ha. Huh. Lua load B and define that is bizarre, my friend. What the fuck has happened? I like I expected literally anything except linker error. That is <laughs> that's so weird. Excuse me. Is that because we modified the Lexa? Uh, right. Is that because we modified the Lexa? Okay. Um, so maybe we can try to remove this entire thing. Uh, right, and then try to do that stuff. Uh, right, and try to rebuild this one more time. Uh, right, what is going to happen? Is that because I modified the Lexa? It could be. No, it's not because of that. Maybe I fucked up something. Uh, where am I? Okay. So let's remove everything in here, right? Let's remove everything in here and start over because why not? Um, so maybe I did something, something weird. Uh -huh, okay. <clears throat> okay, good. 
briefly. Did I actually give it five threads? Ooh, this one is interesting. <coughs> it's taking way more, way more time because it's like clean. So that means even though I was providing minus B, it was not actually rebuilding everything. Aha, uh -huh, so that's probably why. That is interesting. Okay. Uh, can I do uh, clean, for instance? Yeah, I, I should be able to do clean. So maybe that's what I should have done. That's what I should have done before doing. So minus B uh, didn't work. But by the way, do you guys know what is minus B in make? Do you guys know what is minus B? Uh, so it's actually a pretty cool thing. Unconditionally make all targets. So it makes it ignore the usual incremental build uh, logic of make and just rebuild all the targets. But it was not doing that. And that's why it was having linking errors because something was not rebuilt properly. That's probably why. Uh, right. So, oh, it also maybe became slower because of the optimization. So you're right. So my hypothesis, another hypothesis that I had is that because it's slowed in the next make, maybe the flags are not propagated um, to the second make, right? Because one make loads another make, right? So that's what's going on in here. So I don't really know my different. Uh, so let's do this thing. I'm going to go here. So is that not generated? Yeah, lexical analysis. All right. So let's do double, right? So that's going to be the double. And uh, let's go here, uh, right? And after that, we're going to have TK double, right? So that's the... Eh? Don't ask me questions. All right, so <laughs> uh, let's try to rebuild this. So I'm going to do clean and I'm going to try to build this one more time and see how it's go. It's going to go. <sighs> Mm -mm. Minus B is what I've been needed. I'm always learning something new in here. Yeah, so I think... I don't know where we learned that. Yeah, I think I learned it from a video. Uh, right, so it, it is a very useful flag sometimes, right? Just like ignore the incremental logic of make and just like rebuild everything because that's what I want. Okay, so it, it's fine. Apparently there was some weird stuff in there. I don't really know. I don't really know what exactly was there. But anyway, so now it should recognize double as the keyword, All right? So in if I, uh, uh, so it's it's in the wrong place. Let's try to do that one more time, uh, right? So if I do double, it's still nil, right? But in here, while it kind of wants for more, and this is probably because after the double, uh, it tries to parse the condition, the sub expression. So that's what's going on, probably. That's probably what's going on. Uh, let's actually go and grab where we use things like while, right? So specifically TK while, right? So where do we use that? We definitely use that in uh, parser, right? So there's a check match. Uh, so there's a while stat, so that's, that's fine. So here we have this statement, right? So, and I suppose we can introduce something like TK double. Oh yeah, whatever. the one for me honestly uh all right so here we're gonna do that uh so this is gonna be uh, our usual break so it's gonna be like that uh double stat tag no oh because tag no longer exists that's okay jesus christ <laughs> it tags uh all right so hc are you happy now, my friend? Are you happy now, my Okay, you're happy now. All right, cool. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. We're going to be doing that. So let's find a while stat. Uh, right, so here's the while stat. And in here, what we're going to be doing is just this static void. So lex state ls. And this is the line. I have no idea what any of that shies mean, by the way. Literally have no idea. And uh, so the first thing they, they do in here, so they build some sort of a block. They skip the while, right? So they skip the while. You know what? I think we can do something like assert, uh, by the way, is they actually uh, do this sort of thing, uh, right? So this is going to be that. Assert, uh, right? So double stat. Uh, maybe we can even do something like to do. And let's try to rebuild this entire thing. Finally, chat, we're writing code. Look at that, we're writing code, we're compiling shit. I feel like actual software developer. So it doesn't even have a cert. What the fuck? 
you don't even include a certain here. Like why? So are you telling me that this thing never asserts anything? Oh, there is a Lua assert. Okay, so can we just do, uh, you know, Lua assert then? So that's what you're supposed to use. Okay. Mm, so that's what is going on. So we're going to do make. Come on, let's go. Da, 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 da. They have Lua assert. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, guys. So I'm going to try to start it and I'm going to try to do double. Boom. You mother flipper. Look at that. Huh. So, that was not enough. That was not fucking enough. Uh, that was not fucking enough. I wonder why. That is so bizarre, my friend. So, uh, if we just, like, let's grab for all of the places where we have, uh, you know, TK Wild, right? So... There's not that many places, right? Okay, so we have tags, that's fine. So we have the match, but this is at the end of the of the block, so it doesn't really matter. So we have while, so that's fine. So there is a lexing, but this is the definition, right? So this is just like a TK double or something. And then reserved. Number of reserved words. Aha, got you, mother flipper, got you. Look, look, look. So we put TK double at the end. And that was our mistake. That fucked up the number of reserved tokens. Right. So now we have to actually... Okay. Brav, why didn't you introduce like a separate thing for that? Like, uh, that's kind of interesting, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal, honestly. We, we can just put double in here, so... Um, right. So this is other terminal symbols, and this is the uh, like the symbol like reserved things. Right. Uh, I think we figured it out. We figured it out relatively quicker. All right. At least all of that makes sense. Unlike that Emacs extension, by the way. So where is the assert? Where is the assert though? So that's interesting. So, but now we have double. Okay, that is bizarre, isn't it? It didn't even like crash or anything. Like it's just, it just waits for more. That is absolutely bizarre. Uh, so, let me let me see. So let's find double stats. So, it kind of like changed thing. Uh, does Lua uh, assert not crash maybe? We'll, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. It, like, at least I would expect it to print something at least. Um, right, so, but that was kind of weird. Uh, so grip, uh, TK double. Uh, I think it was more like a double stat, double stat. Uh, and can we just like exit with 69? <laughs> Right, I just want to crash, right? I just want to crash. Uh -huh. That's everything I want in my life. Just crash. Uh, okay, so double. Echo. 6 to 9! Look at that. So yeah, so you can actually check the exit code of the latest command with a dollar question mark. So it's a variable that contains the exit code of the latest command. So you can easily check that. So, there you go. So, yeah, uh, that means here we can actually start parsing this thing. We can actually start parsing this thing. So, that's pretty cool. So, what they do in here while they're parsing like a while stat. So, they are taking the function state. Uh, right. So, and the function state is within the next state somehow, but I suppose it's the, the current function that is being parsed. Right. So, that's what it is. Then they organize block count. <laughs> I didn't come up with the names, I'm sorry. It's a block count. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. So, and then uh, they skip the while. And this is probably something that we also need to do, right? So we have to skip 
uh, double, right? So we're skipping the double, right? Because it was not consumed by the caller of this function, right? So whoever called this function didn't consume that. That is understandable. So then we are getting the label. And the question is, is do we want to do it like that as well? So we're saving the label. Uh, do we need to do, the, do we need to have that label, by the way? Um, so it depends on how exactly we're going to be uh, doubling the body. So how exactly we're going to be doubling the body. Uh, we're going to just jump a couple of times, but that means we need to have a counter. Uh, right. If we're not going to have a counter, we can just copy paste the um the uh, the instruction and whatnot in, in any case maybe it does make sense to actually save the um you know the beginning of the block before generating the block the beginning of the block before generating the block because then later we can maybe in the code go back and recopy all of the instructions that we had in there uh right so maybe that's what we can try to do that's what we can try to do so then we do condition we don't really have a condition so that's what's interesting so cond exit uh right so we are just doing yeah we're just checking the condition and whatnot so then we enter in the block right so i don't really know what's the third argument in here right so what's what's the third argument i don't freaking know so enter the block enter the block so ooh, is loop Aha, so there's some sort of a special behavior for loop blocks. That is interesting. That is interesting. So that means there is probably if stat, and it also stats the block. Uh, right. So test then block, if condition then block. Within that thing, uh, it enters block, but you look at for if, it actually says that it's not is loop block. So that's what's interesting about that. Okay. So double stat. So I'm not really sure. I don't think it's going to be a loop block, but maybe it will be a loop block. We'll see. We'll see. In any case, we just have to enter the block. Right. For now, let's say that it's, gonna, it's not going to be a loop block. It's, it's not going to be a loop block. Um, so then we just do the block right so we just parse the block and uh wait that is weird we enter in the block we check the next we check the do and then we enter in the block again but this time it's a regular block because we enter the block which is not loop while loops have two nested blocks the outer block is a loop block and then another block that is not loop block because it was just easier to reuse the existing parser first block is the condition no the first block is actually done after the condition look so we do the condition first so it's outside of that block and then we enter the loop block so the condition is outside of that block and then we check the do, and then we do another block, that, but that, this time it's not a loop block. There's literally two nested blocks with nothing in between. The outer one is a loop one, the inner one is not loop one. Um, I, the, the only reason why it is done like that is that because they already had a block parser that parses the block. Right, and... Uh, it was just easier to reuse. Or maybe it's the uh, same logic for TK for well, I, something, something. I don't know. We can check it out. So for stat. Do we have a for stat? Uh, right. So we're entering the uh, this thing. Uh, right. So then we check for four uh, and stuff like that. But uh, then we leave block. No, apparently four actually has like one loop block, but doesn't have inner. Like my hypothesis is just it was just easy to implement. And it doesn't really change anything from the outside point of view of the behavior, from the like outside behavior. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So uh, let me see, let me see. Uh, double stat, double stat, double stat. So I suppose maybe for us it would be easier to just say, okay, block. All right. So this is going to be BL. Uh, is that how we enter the block? Uh, maybe. Oh, so what's funny is that in that specific block, 
we actually don't even have it. Yeah, that's bizarre. Um, all right. So because we're going to be using that specific block, we don't really need that thing anymore because we're passing ls, right? So because we're passing ls, and uh, after that, after that, we can just you know check for the closing end. Uh, we just check for the closing end. So that's what we do. We just check for the closing end. Um, so, but we'll probably have to do double. So let me check the match and uh, what and who. <laughs> what? <laughs> Naming. Am I right? <laughs> Maybe it makes sense in Brazilian language. I mean, in Portuguese. In Portuguese, Brazilian. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, check the, that next token is what and skip it. In case of error, rise and error uh, that is expected. What should match a who? what should match a who in line where right so that's like i mean where does make sense but what and who uh that doesn't really make that much sense but i mean yeah okay I, i'll i'll leave with that that is basically it believe it or not that is basically it so and in here we might as well uh just maybe define double init so also this code this style of code feels like assembly a little bit honestly it kind of feels like assembly but to be fair lua is written uh i think 30 years ago come on you can do it yeah 30 years ago so yeah it's pretty old it's pretty old so i mean in 90s in 90s people were maybe programming in c like an assembly it's, it's actually early 90s, right? It's early 90s. So that means it was actually first developed in DOS. That's very interesting. Mm. That's pretty boogers. Mine of Rindu. Mine of Rindu, mine of Rindu. Uh, there's a compile. There's this shice compile. Yeah, we have unused variable, but I mean, who cares? Um, okay. Double. Okay. So it recognized it as a block, right? So when puts this double triangle thingy, it wants a block, right? It in fact wants a block. So uh, I'm gonna do print uh, hello. And according to my calculations, it is going to actually execute this entire block uh, once, right? Because there's nothing that would say otherwise. Yeah, there we go. So we introduce the double block, but it execute this thing once. Uh, it executes that thing once. Uh, and what's interesting is that, uh, can we... So what is this label? What is this label? Uh, right, so we have begin and begin. We can compile the block, right? We can compile the block and then we can get end. We can get end. And the question is, what is going to be the difference between begin and end? you know what I mean right so because yeah is it gonna be the amount of instructions or something like that so let's find out we can actually go inside of this function uh, yeah it is it is <laughs> it's that fucking simple okay uh, so it is literally PC it is yeah it is freaking index of an instruction yeah it is a freaking index and instruction. So that means, that means we can basically, after we generated a block, after we generated a block, we can go back into the begin. We can go back into the begin and basically copy end minus begin instructions from there. A jump to begin once. Uh, that's cool. But we need to have an indication that we already jumped there. 
once. So what's going to be the indicate? What's the variable that is going to hold that indication? Like, um, how are we going to do that? So I don't really know. So there, we should have some sort of a variable in there. So maybe since it's sort of like a stack machine, since it's some sort of a stack machine, maybe we should push. We can't. We we can't even do that, can we? Maybe we can. We can do that like literally on the level of uh, instructions, right? So essentially, we can push a value onto the stack, which indicates, uh, which uh, contains false, right? Which contains false. Then we go in through the entire body, right? Going through the entire body, then switch that variable to true and jump once. Then we do another one and check: is that variable became true? If it became true, we just fall through. Right, so there should be something like that. But I don't know how to do that. <laughs> right. So that's the thing. I don't really know how to do that. Uh, but maybe one thing I can do, I can try to cop literally copy instructions. Right, so that sounds like something that I could do. Uh, right, so, so let me see. Mm -hmm. Let me see, let me see. So we have a block cont, and uh, here is the proto. So the proto is the most interesting thing in here. Um, the thing about the code is that instruction is just a uin32, which makes it easy to copy. Mm, which makes it kind of easy to copy. But the question is how exactly we append new instructions in there. Uh, how exactly we append new instructions. Uh, uh, so... Mm. So let's go to the passes and whatnot. So let's go to the block. So stat list uh, statements and if we encounter something like yeah so here is our double so that is understandable i really like that <clears throat> so test and then block so there should be expression uh, sub expression simple simple expression uh -huh, init expression right init expression and it's just that but I don't see how we do that thing. So this is V, right? The, it's an expression description. So this is a sub expression, then expression. Um, so uh, V go if false. Uh -huh. Go if false. So this is E discharge wars what is discharge wars discharge That's such a funny name <laughs> what is it? Uh, okay so op okay so this is probably aha uh -huh. what is what is this aha uh -huh. format emit and iabc abc instruction so check on. okay uh-huh so oh yeah uh -huh, uh -huh. so this is the function state and this is how we sort of like push instructions in there that's how we do that i suppose and this is the lua code and it grows the vector of the code we found it we found it it grows the vector of the code grow a vector i found it i found it i know how it does that right so that's basically the thing that's basically the thing <clears throat> sorry so and the question is like can we simply just not do that if you know what i mean why does it do it like that specifically oh i can yeah i can just do that i can i can just do that mm -mm. you didn't have to press send on that one uh so <laughs> Um, so the thing is, we can actually very easily reuse this pizza shy sung. Pizza shy sung. Uh, so let me see. Let me see. 
Uh, now I'm gonna go to grab. Uh, I want you to copy paste this thing. So let me put it in some somewhere here, right? So I don't forget about it. And then I'm going to grab RN. So uh, what I'm, I'm looking for double stat. I'm looking for double stat. So here is the double stat. Uh, it doesn't have double stat because it's not in tags. Fuck you, Leatherman. Fuck you. Uh, yeah, boy. Now it's in tags. Boy, boy. Look what we're gonna do. Look what we're gonna do. We're gonna do for int begin and fs. I think it's proto, right? So how do we get proto? Just a second. Yeah, it's f, uh, 7 f. And within the proto, how is it called? I think it's just called code, isn't it? I think it's just called code. Yeah. Uh -huh. So code, i. And then what we can do is this shit. I wonder if jumps are relative in there. Are jumps relatives, relative in a Lua uh, bytecode? Because if they are not, this shit is going to fuck up everything, actually. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so we do jumps. So we have while need. So we need to actually see uh, how you do jumps in there. Uh huh. So get the jump. So there is a. Uh huh. Point to itself representing end of the list. Turn offset into absolute position. Hmm. That is bizarre. So you have an offset, and then you return. Yeah, so I would expect this thing to be a relative. UB incoming. Maybe it is UB incoming. I don't know. Uh, but so the thing I'm saying, I'm trying to say is that um, if there is a loop inside of the double block, we copy paste in the loop twice. And so that may fuck up all of the jumps and stuff like that. Right. So that may fuck up everything. So. I think the, the correct question that I want to ask, is the Lua bytecode relocatable? That's the question. That's the correct question I would li uh, like to ask. Is it relocatable? I'm not sure about that. But anyway, so this thing should work without any loops. If we don't put any loops into the double block, it should just work, right? So uh, yeah, let's try to compile this into I think uh, and see if it's going to work. It recompiled. So now uh, I'm going to restart the Lua block and I'm going to do double. Okay, so it looks for more. I'm going to do uh, hello world, right? And then I'm going to do print uh, foo bar. And uh, right, I'm about to close the block. Fuck yeah, I hacked your Lua. I hacked your Lua. I added a new construction that prints this shyse twice. Easy peasy, lemon fucking squeezy. So, <laughs> that's actually super cool. And uh, the, the fact that it's actually pretty straightforward, you just copy the code like that. But again, that may create problems with loops, right? So, I'm not sure how exactly lo loops are going to work there. Uh, so th that's going to be interesting, right? That's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me let me see what we can do about that. So I'm going to create main.lua, main.lua. Uh, so it's already already there, right? So here it is. So we have that. So that means if I simply uh, just do src lua main lua it, it works exactly as you would expect it so how do you do for loops yeah here's the interesting thing i just extended lua 
I have no idea how to do for loops in Lua. I, I have no idea. Like, I don't remember. And I just extended, I just added a new construction to Lua. Like, I'm saying that not to brag or anything, but just to show you how little uh, importance there is to a language. You can extend and hack a language that you don't know. Language is not the most important thing. It's the ability to program. That's what's important. Right. So the language is just a front end to the programming. That's what it is. It's just a front end to the programming. You need to strive to understand what's behind that front end. Um, what's interesting is that uh, the most like effective way to do that is to learn a lot of different languages, right? So you can see programming from different angles and stuff like that. Anyway, so Lua for loops. How do you do that? Mm, I could have actually looked at in, in in the parser, I think. Maybe that's something I could have done, but I don't know. So, all right, so we can just do it like this. Um, so can I try to do that for uh, I uh, one to print I uh, and okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, so we can try to replace this entire thing with just um, for I one to uh, do print i and that looks good actually I, I, I like how concise it looks like mm -mm. Uh, so i really like how how concise it looks like so now uh, i'm going to try to uh, just run uh, this entire thing i mean it worked out right so it didn't fuck up the loops so that means in the bytecode the loops are relocatable right All right, so that's pretty cool. The the loops are relocatable. So uh, for those who just joined, uh, what we did, we added a new construction to Lua that executes a block of code twice. Why we did that? We did that to assert the dominance uh, in the source code, right? So that's how you do that, right? So you come to an open source project and you assert your dominance by implementing a new feature by extending it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, by the way. So th this is just like a little exercise that I like to do from time to time, but because I think the ability to do that is actually super important, right? Because for instance, like th this is the code that I'd never seen before. Maybe I think, I vaguely remember looking into that code, but it was a really long time ago, so I don't remember anything from that time. Like the ability to just open an unknown project and start modifying it and start contributing to it. I think it is really important ability to do that. It's a really important skill. And I try and I like to maintain it from time to time, right? I like to maintain it from time to time. And this is a pretty cool exercise, right? Take a simple project, and Lua is a simple project, a simple language, and just add something to it. Just like have fun, just add a new thing. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so we, we just edit a new block that just repeats the code twice. And it does, it's not even a loop block, by the way. It doesn't do that through jumps. It literally copy paste the, co copy -paste the contents of the block twice. Uh, we can actually do that thrice i think um so who said we can't do that we can actually do j uh from zero to yeah so we, we copy paste it once we can copy paste it twice so that means it's going to be three times so the block is going to exist three times we can do that right so we just add this thing in here uh all right and that should be a thing now so and again it's not a loop it literally copy pastes it copy pastes it so, but I don't remember, like, if we take a look at, at the jumps, right? So what is the jump? Uh, Lua K jump to. So this is how they organize the jump. So you say, I want to jump to while in it, which makes sense. Okay, so how do we do the jump? So we provide that and we have a target. So we have some sort of a target. So we put the target in here. So we patch list oaks. Oaks, oaks, oaks. So the target is the third one. So here is the V target. So how do we do that? 
Um, so we get the jump, which does this kind of thing, which gets the offset, and then it... So what, what I can say is that get jump returns you absolute value, right? It returns you absolute value. Okay, next is an absolute value. So how do we do next? Um, so we put it in list or something like that. That's kind of weird. Uh, but then when, when we fix jump, uh, when we fix jump, um, it's not obvious. Okay, so it does offset. All right, so it gets the destination. Okay, I can see that. It gets the destination. It gets the current PC and turns that into an offset, which is a relative thing, which is a relative th thing, and sets that offset into the jump instruction. Okay, here is the proof that demonstrates that it uses relative uh, jumps. So fix jump instruction at position PC to jump to the destination. Okay, relative. I, I should have actually read this. So, so they are relative, so that means they are safely relocatable. You can take piece of code that jumps to different labels and you can safely move it around in the, uh, you know, in an array of instructions and it's still going to work because it does not depend on specific absolute addresses it's jumping it's uh, dependent on the relative ones so it's a it's a relocate uh, relocatable code which makes it easy to implement sort of like a macro things and to be fair that double thing is in fact a macro thing right so you can argue that this thing is a macro that just expands this body into like this code but twice uh, but if the code jumps somehow outside of the block, how can you write syntactically in um, in Lua something that will jump outside of the double? How can you syntactically jump? Do you have go tos? You have go to. Okay. Uh, so Lua go to. I don't think it's going to do anything to be fair. Uh, so where, how do you set the labels? Uh, right. So we can just do go to uh, test. Oh, this one is interesting. Okay, I think it's going to work. I think it is going to work, but it is going to execute it once. You know why? Right. Because, yeah, so essentially it will expand it into three go-tos like that. And essentially when it will start executing, it will execute the first for loop, the first for loop, and then it will jump to the test, which is obviously outside of the whole thing. So even though you have the blog that repeats the copy-paste the code several times, you can make it execute the code once by using go to. Uh, I hacked out of the block. So let's give it a try. Uh, I didn't want to do that actually. So just a second. That's actually pretty cool, right? I mean, it doesn't break the code, but it doesn't break the interpretation or anything like that. But it's it's rather interesting, I think. Uh, it's sort of like an interesting uh, semantical side effect, if you know what I mean. Uh, right. Uh, so it's not, it's not how you do that, right? Um, so I near. So you can't do it like that. So. I thought that's how we do that, don't you? I thought that's how we do that. No, apparently this is not how we do that. Um, so, so go to con. So this is incorrect code apparently. Right? Mm. Remove double quotes. What? Oh, from here. I see. Yeah, so there we go. I hacked out of the block, right? I hacked out of the block. But if you don't do uh, don't do uh, go to, it will repeat it three times actually, right? Because we make it repeat three times. Uh, but if you do go to, which there is nothing wrong with, to be fair, right? There is nothing wrong with. 
so it acts similarly to how if it was just a loop right if it was just a loop it would act the same uh right so i don't see any problems with that i don't see any problems with go to's and jumping out so so that's pretty cool uh yes 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 and that's the behavior i would expect exactly yeah that's pretty interesting so uh you know what you know what i think i want to make a small break and refill a cup of tea and after the small break i want to look into like an actually important question like an actually important question why lua indices arrays from one so um all right, this is already next day, and I decided to cut out that part of the stream because it was, it was already third hour of the stream, and I was already kind of tired, so I didn't really achieve anything meaningful on that stream. So there's nothing particularly interesting there. So, uh, And um, after the stream, after I rest a little bit, I looked into the source code again, and apparently it is relatively easy to actually make the law arrays uh, start from zero by default, but it's not particularly useful, right? So let's actually take a look at that. So, so we have this sort of source code and uh, what we actually want to do, right? So we want to make this kind of code work, right? So we want this thing to be uh, starting from zero by default. So if we take the current behavior of the of the Lua, it doesn't work like that, right? So the zeros element is actually nil, uh, right? And the first one is 69, right? So um, what I found, by the way, uh, an interesting thing off screen is that you can take a look at the um, human uh, readable representation of the bytecode using Lua C, right? If you take a look at Lua C, uh, I think it has a flag called minus L, right? So it's a very interesting flag that actually allows you to take a look at the bytecode in here. Look at that, look at that. This is actually pretty cool. So, and essentially here we are loading 69 and 420 into registers i suppose so maybe one and two are the registers and like i don't really know for sure because i don't know really know how the internals of lua actually work but this is just like my hypothesis and then we do the set list which basically creates a list of them uh so then we set this thing up i suppose right so we add in sort of like a name to uh to the stack or something then print and then set it uh, again and what we're doing we're getting so the, the getting of the element is actually done through the opcode get i. Uh, again, I do not fully understand how all of these parameters work, but it's not really that important, right? So because it's kind of obvious that getting uh, the element of the array is done through this opcode. So in one of the things we can actually do, we can take a look at where that opcode is implemented, right? So uh, we can literally just do grep and let's just see where it is mentioned, right? So we have things like op get i and uh, so that opcode is the one that we're interested in. So, and essentially, obviously something uh, like getting the, something like getting element is probably done to this function, fast get i. And I wonder if I can actually jump there. I, I can actually jump there. So it's a, a little bit convoluted macro, but if you ponder upon it, it's not really that difficult to understand. So what do we have in here? We're checking that this thing is a table, right? And if it's not a table, so whatever we're trying to get is instantly new. That is understandable. So that means we're only interested in this part of the macro. So, and what we're doing here, uh, right, so we're taking k, which is presumably an index, and we're checking that it is less than a limit of the uh, table, right? So a, I suppose, stands for an array, right? And if it's less, it's, if it's within that limit, we take k minus first element, right? And otherwise, we're getting sort of deeper, we're probably uh, getting that through the linked list of nodes that, is, uh, that it is within the table, because if you take a look at the table, I think there is definition of the table somewhere, uh, right? So table, uh, I don't quite remember how is it called, right? So and where it is defined, so we can jump there. Can I jump there? I should be able to jump there. There we go. So a table actually combines sort of like two representation of, uh, representations of its content, right? So it has an array part and it has a node part. And a node is sort of like a linked list or something like that. Or maybe it's a tree. I think it's more of a like a linked list. Is there something like a next? 
um right there is a next thing yeah right so for chaining and stuff like that so and usually if you have like a just straight up arrays of numbers um it's going to be a table that has an array part right so then the interpreter can actually index this array by by an index right and essentially if you notice a very interesting thing right so they literally explicitly explicitly subtract the index like minus one from indexed which makes it basically one based so essentially if you just get rid of that minus one <laughs> when you're indexing the thing you will get the arrays the like the very basic very simple arrays uh starting from zero right so let's actually try to rebuild this entire thing so and see how it goes if, if it actually does the trick uh right and if I try to run this entire thing one more time, uh, you will see that it works, right? So uh, now we're basically indexing these things from zero and uh, it, it actually works, but it is absolutely useless. It is absolutely useless because depending on the arrays, starting from one is actually uh, throughout the source code of Lua. This is not the single place uh, that you have to do modification. It's actually a lot of places, right? Because it's a convention. So a lot of parts of the code just depend on convention. And it's not really straightforward to find all of those places. One of the examples would be, for example, like a function iPair, right? So if you try to do something like iPair, I don't even remember how to use iPair, by the way. Just let, let me actually Google it up so, super quick. <clears throat> So Chromium, it, yeah, it takes some time to actually load Chromium for me. Uh, so iPayers uh, Lua example. So I think uh, you probably do something like iPayers. Uh, right, so and essentially it's an iterator. It's an iterator that gives you index and a value. Did I guess it correctly? I think I actually guessed it correctly. Um, so let's actually take a look at the example. Uh, yeah, so we have to do in actually okay so and in here right so i is supposed to be the index right and v is supposed to be the value this thing breaks completely because i players uh expects that array starts from one so the indexing is completely broken from now on right so if i try to do that as you can see yeah so nothing works so if you really want to uh make lua like zero based language you have to like do a lot of work and go through the entirety of the source code and uh, stuff like that. And even then it's going to be useless because there is a lot of Lua code out there that depends on uh, one uh, one based indexing, right? So, but it's a great for a meme, right? So do, doing something like that is actually a pretty cool meme. And I posted that on, on my Twitter. Uh, I'm going to put the link to the tweet in the description. So it went actually quite kind of viral. So people really like that idea, but they generally like do not recommend doing that. And I don't think it is particularly useful to be fair to the debate like debate whether it's correct to start from zero or one it's kind of like big engine or little engine or tabs versus spaces it's just like it doesn't really matter let's just be consistent at least uh right so yeah th there is you know pros and cons for both of the approaches but it's just like let's just establish like a universal convention and just move on from here but i mean lua is a, is a pretty old language actually like it's a 30 years old language and um i suppose at that time that uh, sort of debate was not particularly settled yet and so now we have a lot of dependency on Lua and uh, a lot of source code that is written in Lua. So we kind of stuck with that, right? So, so it, it sort of became like a uh, like a Lua meme, right? So it's now it's a Lua thing to start from one. Actually, there's more languages that uh, start in this game from one, right? Like Julia, uh, for instance. But yeah, that's besides the point. So uh, and here's another interesting thing. Uh, I was thinking about the go to inside of the double block right so it seems to be working it is seems to be working like if we take a look at this sort of example uh right equal um one two do print i and and let's actually try to run this entire thing and as you can see this thing is working but if we introduce side something like uh exit can we introduce something like the exit and just go to uh, go to exit um, and let's print something uh, hacked out of the uh, block right and if we try to do that that seems to be working that seems to be working but 
it is only working because the second go to was never reached. Here's an interesting thing. Um, so to implement go to in any language, it doesn't really matter like what language it is. What you have to do, you have to do sort of like a uh, one iteration and then back patching. Because for instance, here we're jumping to exit, but we don't really know where exit is and, and until we actually reach it. So that means that specific go to instruction is probably saved somewhere in some sort of a list uh, then uh, which is looked into after the entire compilation is done and the entire parsing is done. Right. So, and essentially, since we generate, actually legit generate this part and copy paste this part, this second go to is probably never put into that list. It never put into that list and probably because of that, never actually uh, backpatched. It is never actually backpatched, uh, which is rather interesting. But you never really reached reach that thing uh, because, yeah, you, you just exit out of that. And I wonder, like, yeah, so can you create something that will cause uh, this thing to actually reach that copy-pasted go to that is not backpatched? Is it even possible to do something like that? Uh, for instance, we can have a variable equal to false initially, uh, right? And then uh, if it is true, then we go to exit, right? We go to exit. Uh, so maybe I want to even do something like and uh, go to exit. And then we set it to true. So then if I copy paste it twice, Right, we probably backpatched that go to, but, but we didn't back, backpatch this one. So, but since in the first one, this one is going to be false, we never actually go into that go to, but then it becomes true, and we actually go into that go to, and something may blow up because of that. Something may blow up because of that. So this is hypothesis. I don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, I actually got this idea right before I sat down re to record this footnote for the session, actually. <laughs> if if for the zero-based index, I kind of knew what to expect. For this one, I don't really know if it's going to work or not. But this is one of the ideas that I just got before uh, pressing the start button. Uh, right. So let's actually see what's going to happen. I, I wonder. I, I, I'm going to bet that it's going to blow up. Uh, it actually hangs. Holy shit, it actually hangs. So y you can actually break that. Right, if I put something like true in here, it it's fine, right? So it's fine, but if you put something like that, it's gonna hang, I suppose, maybe by default, uh, go to jumps into itself. Maybe by default, wait a second, if the jumps, here's the thing, here's the thing. If the jumps in Lua are relative, uh, so that means if jump zero is equal to jump to itself and all zero is also uh, usually the default initialization value. So yeah, so to, to fix that, when we copy paste this entire thing, we need to identify the go to instructions. We need to identify the go to instruction and add them to that sort of like a wasting, waiting back patch list. I don't even know how it looks like, uh, but I mean, I implemented languages, programming languages in the past, so I know uh, how usually it goes. So, so there should be some sort of a list into which we add go to's. Uh, and we can try to find that, right? So we actually can try to find that. So I'm going to grab. Uh, something like tk go to right so and uh, so here's the case where we do this go to and here we parse the go to statement and in the go to statement uh, what we do forward jump will be resolved when the label is declared right forward jump okay so new go to entry so we only do that we only do that uh, if it's a forward jump, right? So we're trying to distinguish between forward, uh, forward jump and backward jumps. So here we have a list, uh, so new array, and what are we, where are we adding all of that? So we have a label list. Uh huh. So we have a label list, and uh, we're adding a new thing into that label list, right? So to properly fix all of that, we will also have to, as we copy paste that code, we have to see. Uh, whether it's a go-to or not, and then when 
we encounter Go2, when we encounter Go2, we have to do something about that. But then maybe you can also come up with some shenanigans, uh, with some shenanigans when the label is within the code as well, right? It's, it's within the code as well. So yeah, one of the things we can try to do maybe forbid Go2 within, within the block, right? <laughs> Uh, just forbid go to within the block because it kind of breaks it because because I can see that it's sort of like a Pandora box right it's a, some sort of a Pandora box that is uh, right so you you don't really know what to expect from here right so or another solution another solution would be to just implement it as a loop right so uh, essentially yeah just implement it as a loop uh, right, but I'm not going to do all of that right now. So I just want you to put that into the video as sort of a remark uh, saying that just copy pasting those instructions is probably incorrect, right? And it may lead to, um, you know, situations when you can break the behavior of that double, uh, double block. So I think it was important to mention, like at least mention, right? So all of that is not, you know, you know, final solution, right? So, and I suppose because of that, the, the more correct solution would be to just treat it as a loop, right? Essentially, just, you know, instead of copy-pasting, just jump twice. But if you want to jump twice, you need to keep track of how many times you already jump, uh, right? So you need to introduce some sort of a variable and stuff like that. So, yeah. That's basically it. That's basically it. So exploring Lua was actually a lot of fun. Uh, I really recommend from time to time, uh, you know, taking these small open source projects and just look inside of them, uh, like explore them and maybe learn something new. Actually, uh, quite often people ask me, like, where did I learn all of this cool stuff? I do from time to time this kind of stuff, right? I look into the uh, like established open source projects, like try to extend it. And as I extend it, I see what, how things are implemented and I make notes, right? And I remember that. So, and that's how I learn, right? Because this kind of stuff, they're not going to put it in a book, right? M maybe there is a book written about, about Lua, about in terms of Lua, but, uh, you know, you never know, you never know, like, it's better to just explore things, it's better to just explore things, and it's also fun, it is also fun. All right, that's it for today, thanks everyone who's watching me right now, I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next recreation programming session with Amista Azuzin. So maybe in the future, I'm going to use Luo for something, right? I really enjoyed what I saw. Uh, maybe I'm going to embed it into something, maybe in visualizing. How about that? So anyway, so that's it for today. Love you all. Mwah.